Hello my people, you're listening to the Voice of Reason right here at Campus of Performing Arts. Copa Radio, a- Copa Radio, JHP 08, man. We're riding this thing at 180 km speed per hour, but Fetu, you know how we do it. We're going to give it all up to the bass master, Mr. Graham Carey, and he'll be presenting uh, the session, uh, The Bass X of Bass. Got it. Hey partners, bass players, we're going to slow it down from 180 to 80. <laughs> Okay, today, man, I'm going to talk about uh, the stuff you need to know as a bass player. First of all, and not necessarily in any order, technique. So, technique is ability. Good technique promotes good control, power, stamina, and tone. Good technique promotes confidence and eradicates intimidation due to insecurity. Insecurity. (laughs) But no amount of technique can ever take place at a place of self-confidence. That is belief in yourself, love for the music and feel. So you've got some, you've got a right hand and you've got a left hand, right? Those you put on the bass. The right takes care of the picking. If you're right-handed, the left takes care of the fretting. So you've got fingers, you've got a pick like as in the plectrum. You've got thumb stroking those strings. You've got slap and pop. You've got ghost notes, palm slapping, patting, sliding, tapping, thumb pick, palm muting, short versus long notes strumming, false harmonics. So there's a whole lot of stuff at your disposal. Use one to four picking fingers. Okay, if you use one, like the great James Jameson, you know, his, his one finger was called the hook. But you can use four, like Stanley Clark did. All right, so from your fingers to the bridge, you've got flat picking with your finger fingernail. You've got volume swells and note fading from the bridge. Right, so there's a whole lot of stuff. If you want to kind of know more about these, come see me at Copa. The more harmonic knowledge you have, the better. Chords, double stops, single notes, etc., etc., etc. So your progressions, your harmonic progressions. There's a whole lot of stuff you can do. As a bass player, you're supposed to do root motion, pedal point, ostinatos. What are those? What is pedal point? All right, so while the guitar player or keyboard player is playing a whole bunch of different chords, you're just kind of pedaling on that one tone, all right, creating tension. An ostinato is similar to a pedal point in that it could be a figure. If you listen to great bands like Bon Jovi, etc., that's just one of them, uh, you'll notice sometimes the bass just plays this ostinato figure, a repeating bass figure like and the chords could be going whatever. Got it? In composition, getting to know your inversions. Alternatives, reharmonizations, substitution chords. These are all stuff that you have on your palette uh, of color as a bass player. In arrangement, uh, knowing what register to play to create different emotions. All right. So, so if you go deeper, as us bass players do, there's more emotion. If you go higher, right, you create a different kind of sound. You've got a ton of harmonics to play, all right, where you're not actually fretting the note. You're picking a, like a harmonic, so it gets that beautiful ethereal sound. Scales and modes, all keys from any position, right? Then you've got the boys to men exercise. What is boys to men exercise? It's not a band, it's a technique. The technique, all right, where you're playing all your scales from the lowest position on your bass, right? That's the boys to men exercise. Intonation, what is intonation? That is if your instrument is in tune with itself. Tuning. Tune up to the pitch. When you tune, tune up to the pitch. Okay, gradually tune in with your tuning peg. Try open tuning. And sometimes as a bass player, if you tune slightly flat in the track, uh, the bass kind of tends to lay there more, right? And sometimes if you play behind the beat, the bass lays in the track more. Right, so your intonation is adjusted by uh, the bridge, right? And also by the curvature in the neck. So learning how to set up your instrument. Um, that's what most most kind of professional players do, learning how to set up your instrument. So it plays for you uh, and it's playability. Discard bad habits. Zero in to all your fret cracks, your buzzing, pulling the string while, you, while you're playing. All right, that all, just, you need to do that as a professional to kind of get the best sound out your bass. The basics of bass develop relative pitch, all right? So if you hear something, you think, I know where that is in my instrument, all right? So imagine if you could play any note or any phrase or any groove that you hear, 
right? That's an experience thing. The more you play, the more you practice, the better your developing rel relative pitch will get. Dynamics. Did you see what I did there? Dynamics, all right? Soft and loud. Volume and touch, that's right? all in the hands, all right? So there's no feel without touch. That's deep. Like us bass players, we do it deep. All right, here's, here's an old joke. Dynamics. You say to the drummer, hey man, where's the dynamics? And the drummer says, hey man, I'm playing as loud as I can. <laughs> Space. Did you see that? Space, all right? Uh, rests are also music. Rests are also music. Dig it. Turn the page. Timekeeping, all right? That's your job as a bass player, is your timekeeping. You know, the, all the time re revolves around you. It, also, another thing, if you take away bass in the track, you take away the style. So you're, you're, you're responsible for so many parts of, of the song, right? So determine the pulse of the song. You don't have to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Maybe you can just count a pulse. One, one, one. There you go. Did you feel it? Did you feel it? The guys in the studio felt it. I felt it. All right. Be able to play alone and convey time and feel and harmonic structures, right? Others will want to play with you if you can do this on your own because then you create a natural kind of inner clock. All right, so once again, moving on. Time improves with a metronome until you acquire the inner clock, all right? So that's having time in your body. Try setting the metronome on two and four, all right? So it goes one, two, four, one, Get it, all right? Because that's like your backbeat. That's what the drummer will play on the on the snare. If you can groove with the backbeat, you can groove with anything. Try playing anywhere around the beat, before, on, or after the beat. Sometimes in kind of jazz, they, they want you to play ahead of the beat, so you're really pushing the beat forward in Latin music as well. Or if you're playing like a cool bossa nova, you might want to lay back. If you're playing R&B, lay back in the track, all right? With the time feel, play with the time. So playing in the pocket. Right, that's kind of typical pop thing where you're playing in the pocket, pocket uh, with the f groove. Right, so in the pocket means exactly where it's supposed to be. And that happens from different songs. Different songs have places where they have to kind of be or not. If it don't groove, it ain't worth a dollar. That's your bottom line as a bass player. All right, so the pulse of the music is the time feel. And that's the heart of the music. That's where the, the song reverberates and touches people's hearts. Right. Play with point. So attitude, mean it. Have a commitment, commitment to your playing. Rhythmic articul articulation, a clean, clear sound, a warm sound, a nice fundamental sound that supports the whole track. Get that snap in the country music. Snap, boonch, 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 boonch. Dig it? Bass players do it deep. Bass players do it with snap. Bass players do it with accuracy. Know the fretboard and be able to play in any key. Take a song you know and transpose it. Memorize tunes, build a repertoire. There are so many books out there, right? As a jazz player, for example, in the States and around the world, you've got to know at least 100 jazz standard songs because somebody might call. Let's play a, let's play a version of uh, Tangerine in F. What the hell is Tangerine? It's not a fruit, it's a song. Sight reading. A professional freelance musician is expected to read well enough to cover most above average parts that come his way and have enough technical ability to play the more advanced parts. Reading, your ears and experience will get you by in most situations. There's another thing, doubling. What does doubling mean? Playing electric bass, playing upright bass, playing keyboard bass. All right. If you can do all those, you get more work, more exposure and more respect. And if you throw reading into the mix as well, more respect. If you throw technique into the mix as well, even more respect. Bass X of bass. Playing four, five and six, and six strings can also be beneficial. I'm cracking these guys up in the studio, man. Cracking these guys up. The most recorded bass in modern history in the last 50 years is the Fender Precision Bass, right? Everything came from the Fender Bass. That's me. I'm a Fender Bass man. The guy with the hat. Right, so with a Fender, you can't go wrong with the sound. All right, maybe a bit biased, but Fender's been around for so long. Engineers today still cringe if you don't bring one of these basses. 
a Fender bass into the recording session, right? Because they're so used, they know that that will fit in the track. Playing double bass with an accent on classical playing gives a good grounding in tone, control, musicality, and technique. I ha hardly see any double bass players around in South Africa, but overseas you go, there's a lot of double bass players, right? And that adds another feel to the music. So, bass players, when you have all this in your hands, your mind and heart, do as Bruce Lee does. Do as Bruce Lee says. Don't think. Feel. Listen. Be musical. Bass players do it deeply. And when you're on a boat that's sinking, remember, women in rhythm section first. That's the basics of bass. Goodbye. Till next time. <laughs>